Hello everyone, this is Ether Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. So, like the previous episode spoiled, uh, we didn't make tier 28, but again, not the end of the world. I wasn't expecting my defense to do as quote-unquote well as it did. <laughs> um, it's really just quite something. That didn't really change anything, except use legendary Julia and it's like people of Regan uh, is it like uh, I feel like the problem was Regan couldn't actually take out Duma or something because he's bonus but people brought Naga and stuff so I could totally see people one-shotting Duma with Regan especially since I don't have any way to deny her special just going to, she's, she's just going to get some free damage and stuff, so it should be theoretically trivial if you have Naga to beat Duma, and then you can just leave, and you're, the only the only thing, the only gimmick here is Elwood being this far forward, so you can get danced by Mirabilis and have a decent range. I did some stuff with structure placement this week as well to see if anyone would abuse it, but no one really did that, so <laughs> I mean it's 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 brave Edelgard. She doesn't reduce the damage from the first hit. It's not like she's ever going to actually kill Otherwood. There's double poison strike. I mean, how can this ever go well? <laughs> I, I would I would be more content using like Dimitri here. She doesn't even live the one round because of Dark Shrine. So it's just free real estate for Elwa to run around. And I think at some point I might go back to using, uh, what's it called? Gale Force. But it's weird. It's like once I start using Gale Force, that's when everyone starts bringing out their, uh... <laughs> that's when everyone decides it's the perfect time to bring out... Pulse smoke and whatnot. I don't know why. That's just apparently what happens. And of course, this week we're meeting with double poison strike. Elwa, there's absolutely no reason to do it. It's just funny because he doesn't die too often in one round. So if he gets to attack, he can chip down the enemy pretty decently, especially if he gets danced. Because I have attack tactic up, so his attack stat's okay. It's not terrible. It's kind of like the caliber of attack that I would want on basically all of my units. <laughs> if I was trying to murder a tank, uh, I would I would need that kind of caliber of attack. Like, was that 72 attack? Like if everyone on my team had over 70 attack, it would be amazing. But yeah, that's just not happening. <laughs> but again. Um, people here aren't bringing Naga, so Mr. Duma's fell breath uh, definitely hurts Regan a lot. But honestly, um, honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't actually know. I knew Duma because he was bonus. He's gonna be bulkier, but it's like I, I kind of feel like uh, if people tried, Duma could just get taken out. But I don't know. This obviously isn't going to work well because this is a guard bearing Altina that is trying to tank multiple hits in the same phase. Yeah, there's something wrong there. And of course, there isn't even bonus doubler on Altina. It's actually on Libra, so kind of awkward. So the guard bearing is basically wasted. And now there's no vantage, so it's just an obvious dance from Legendary Julia. And she's always going to hit like a truck. Uh, what was that? 74, 88, 90 attack. <laughs> yeah, not, not too terrible. And you know, she lives a hit. Amazing. As you'll see, a uh, pretty rigged result. I'm not sure if they calced it out. Props to them if they did, but uh, it was a pretty rigged, <laughs> pretty rigged kill on Legendary Julio later in the season. Well, Sonya does Sonya things, so it's kind of whatever at this point. Can't really do much here. They're trying to go after the 
We can't really go after the Yuffie Fountain here, so Ripperonis. And well, it just keeps going. This time someone brought Legendary Julia, but the play they made is like, eh? I don't, I don't understand. But, uh, still liking my Catapult and Duma strat, even though it's super terrible because Duma's frontline. If Duma was like midline, aka not backline, but not frontline, he could do a lot of damage to a bunch of the carry units that go around because a lot of times my units will do non-negligible damage to a lot of units, especially like Elwood um, when he's buffed up like this. So you know, Duma can get 83 attack with Bold Fighter, so assuming, you know, not null follow-up or whatever, or he gets one shot, that's a lot of damage. It, it, like it doesn't even matter if you have 50 res, which is a lot of res in Ether Raids, especially for uh, Astra Season. You're still taking a crud ton of damage. You might not die if, because of HP inflation, but you, you, you might take a bit. <laughs> and so that's why, that's why I feel like I could get Duma to do some funny things. If, uh, whatchamacallit, Wings of Mercy seal becomes a thing, I hope it doesn't. Then uh, Wings of Mercy, Bold Fighter, Duma actually would just hit like a ridiculous trek. <laughs> it's almost an auto kill even. That's just... Of course the problem with that is then he wouldn't be able to get Dance to remove debuffs, so he probably would have less attack, but he's not even plus 10 yet. I haven't given him a single flower yet. Like, there's uh, plenty of potential for more power. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking it, it would be a funny thing to do. Not sure how I would do it. It would definitely have to involve something like round orders. But here, this is the rigged clear I was talking about. Again, I have no idea if they calced it out, but uh, props to them if they did. You're just getting set up here. Nothing too special. Um, I don't know. Do a... Eventually, at some point, I'm going to actually meme and just have a, like, four or five Duma defense with raid boss units <laughs> that just have a ton of attack and HP. I'm not sure what I, who I would put there. I mean, I could do, like, Legendary Krom, but he doesn't actually do that much damage because he can't double the speedsters. So he only gets to attack once and one shotting in Ether Raids is super non trivial without a special. But they go in here and they get the exact 28 times 2 there, 100% totally not rigged. Um, this here, Duo Makaya does need to take out Elwood, otherwise things might happen. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, kind, kind of rigged there. There's. I don't know if it was, again, calced off, it was calced out props to them because it's GG from here. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> going to hit a nice amount of damage and, well, of course, Sonya's not going to be able to do anything. She can barely do anything with her specials, so, yeah, that, that funny story about this match, too. I, I for almost forgot to mention it. Uh, <laughs> we'll go back into the match real quick and just play it again for the heck of it. But uh, I fought this person's team. They had like an Elwood, Dual Alphonse, and some other spoopy units. I think there was like a Thracier and stuff. But uh, so there was a Sylvia left, at, um, left on the field that I still need to kill to win the match. And then that was when I realized, wait a second, I forgot, I want to sack a unit <laughs> every match just to be nice. But then I almost forgot, so I was like, okay, let's see, who could I sack in one turn? Because it was like, I think it was turn, it was either turn five or six, I don't remember because I was recording, but I was like, okay, let's see, I think it was turn five. It's like, okay, who can I send? in front of Sylvia to get murdered. <laughs> so I was like, okay, surely if I panic Altina, because she was buffed with attack defense, so 
Sylvia will be able to kill because Wodal plus Moonbow. But the problem was Sylvia's attack was debuffed and uh, I calced it out and she couldn't kill Altina in, the prob in one round. And the problem with that is that Altina has Vantage, so then <laughs> it wouldn't work. So I was like, well, great. Uh, hmm. So I just had to end the match, and I, I highly doubt it would have changed the fact they rematch. And they probably would just steamroll my team, but... Yeah, maybe, maybe if I uh, didn't goof, that would happen. Also, this is where attack defense solo seal and Elwood would have actually gave me tier 28 this week. This is what happens when you meme too hard. <laughs> uh, of course, they might have played it differently, but I kind of doubt it. Double poison strike versus poison strike and attack defense solo. I don't think people are going to notice. But if they calced it out, again, props to them. I, I kind of don't think they did, but... Uh, Someone finally realized they can use Regan to, uh, with Naga to take out Duma and leave. And, well, this is just unfortunate. Uh, of course, Shinon's adjacent to, like, literally everyone. Um. Actually, no, it wouldn't have mattered. Attack defense solo doesn't matter here. Never mind. I only remembered Shinon being left at, uh, what is it? 3 HP from the double poison strike, so yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. Maybe it would have mattered there because Shino wouldn't have been able to live a hit like that, but I don't know. Um, and Sonya being Sonya, we were able to pick up a kill, but yeah, because we didn't pick up two kills here, uh, we have no kill power left, so... <laughs> so it's just rip for us, and just not picking up a double kill here cost us at the end of the season, but that's how it is. I literally... Elwood, for me, is just not fast enough. He can never be fast enough. Like, I need him to have... I would need, like, ARD and then, like, lol speed and, like, everything I can possibly get to get more speed because trying to consistently double with defense units without going him on speed is, uh, Something else, because of course, in 2020, units like this Norn here are just pretty fast, so it's not gonna matter, of course, but they're just gonna roll us. Just good play, nothing mind blowing here. Just solid execution, nothing to say. Uh, but again, suppose hypothetically, because Norn can't heal up to uh, full HP unless she uses noontime on someone. This Norn, uh, let's see, let's pretend, let's pretend she's at her best, so that's 39 res, and then 39 res, Duma over here, of course there's lull attack, but, um, so he only has like 66 attack or something, but he's still doing like almost a good chunk of her HP, like it's more than half, which is basically more than most of my units can do. <laughs> uh, he, he can definitely truck, and because she doesn't have um, close close counter, he can get danced, and so he could actually just legitimately two round KO this Norn. Like he he. He's, he's memed on for being a bad mythic, but he, he can do some damage. That's that's kind of the thing that I like about Duma. Of course, in reality, when Naga and stuff exists, of course, it's never going to end well. But uh, here they have their pulse smoke, and they're obviously going to get rid of legendary Julia because impact is a thing, but Julia wouldn't. Julia actually would have done a decent amount of damage as well. Because uh, these field bluffs are neutralized, light and dark and whatnot, but uh, yeah, we got we got nothing, <laughs> so it's just uh, tings all around and a rip for us. Yep, just just good execution here, nothing mind blowing. Pulse smoke definitely helping out, but even if they didn't have pulse smoke. I'm gonna be real, Sonya was not killing <laughs> Norn when she's inflicting minus 10 attack. 
Uh, yeah, that, that's not happening. <laughs> Even if she didn't even have that, pretty sure Sonya still wouldn't have killed. Because what is that? 58 attack and like 42 res glee? Yeah, that, that wasn't happening. And well, here was the match that obliterated our chances and our last chance to uh, make tier 28. And well, it should be no surprise how this goes because there's absolutely no vantage on this team. So as long as you, you just kill everything in one round, it's over. And that should be pretty trivial. And that's what they do here. They activate their harmonized skill and two shot. Of course, it's easy two shotting. And of course, they also have flame here. And Brave Lucina with Sun Panic as well. Good tech for this particular matchup where we have attack tactic. So yeah, Altina has a pretty solid attack stat. Let's see how much exactly that is. Uh, it's, I think, it, yeah, it's just 69, 75, 78, 81, 84. It's not terrible. 84 tech's not bad. But yep. That's just legendary Julia does not have a lot of HP and uh, for Sonya they can just fling in with smite and just pick up the kill there and it's over. But even if Olivia were to somehow live, she can't one round to you. I wouldn't expect her to at least. I guess if she sh she somehow <laughs> lived two hits, she has Wodal plus Luna. But yeah, that, that, that wasn't happening. And well, like seven hours later, we get this match that would have secured us tier 28. But uh, that's how it goes. Can't pick and choose who you face on defense. You can to a degree by do only doing double matches, for example. So there's a smaller pool of people who can rematch you, for example. But yeah, this is just Legendary Julia trolling duo Alphonse again. This is just why I... I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, pre it's pretty sad. That's all I gotta say. Um, of course, Legendary Julia is kind of cl as close as you're going to get to a pseudo hard counter to duo Alphonse. But I'm just saying this is uh, pretty sad. Legendary Julia is at a whopping 16 HP, and uh, well, I know this duo Alphonse is also minus attack, but um, yikes. <laughs> uh, uh, the minus attack really hurting here. Uh, feels bad. Of course, I have the Plumeria support here. They don't have any other source of attack buffs, so... That is unfortunate, but uh, even if Duo Alphonse did live, I, I don't think it would have mattered. <laughs> I'm gonna be real because everyone is so low on HP, he's gonna be healing negligible damage with Open the Future, and there's still a Glacies around. So even if Legendary Julia would get one shot, pretty sure Sonya attacks first or something. And it wouldn't have ended well anyways because Sonya was doing 64 damage. And of course Sonya's just gonna potato into flame there and we have no mobility. So rip. Uh, if I do get if I eventually get ground orders, that would maybe be useful. Of course, that would be exchanging out attack tactic. So it'd be doing considerably less damage. Especially on Duma, but I mean what are you gonna do about it? You have, that's that's the problem. You can never have enough skills on defense. But yeah, with that we hit uh, as close as I think we're ever going to get to 13,799, the actual meme number. Uh, this is about as close as it's going to get. And of course the defense uh, lift reward tiers have been readjusted from the update. So instead of 100 it's now 80 to get the maximum tier so rip more flowers but again what am i gonna do about it we're just playing casually 
But uh, we're going back up to interval 20. Let's see if we can make it back up to 21. Legion's battles. Well, we're just we're just trying to make top 1k as often as we can in Legion's battles. Especially since it only happens every other week. So the dragon flower difference is pretty huge here, even more so than ether raids. So it's of course across since ether raids happens every week, it balances out. But uh yeah, you gotta make a count when that when it happens. And well, it's close, but we should be holding. It's been around like 12 hours ago, I had like a hundred something, like low 100s of ranks to go, and now we're more towards like the what is that 91 ranks? So it's it should hold, and if not, we just got to clear this run and blitz out a run with this team. Pretty rough week with this. Oh, <laughs> uh, pretty rough week with this team. I'll be back. I knew I forgot to do something while <laughs> before starting the recording. Uh, plug in my phone to charge while recording. So uh, there we go. Should be holding and defense. Well, I was too lazy this week to change my defense. So it's just what I used the previous week when it was water season. So pretty much, yeah, about what I expected. And arena assaults, top 1k again. The nice thing about this, uh, where I am at this point, is I cover two seasons, Water and Earth now. So the only time when I can't abuse Blessings for Arena Assault is when it's Wind and Fire. Or Fire and Wind, I mean, the order technically matters <laughs> in the grand scheme of the schedule, but um, that means for the most part I can always almost always make top 1k in arena assault but like at the most optimal spectrum technically i can always make top 1k even i would just have to fish ultra hardcore during wind and fire but yeah we don't do that <laughs> but uh, anyways we'll be back when the results drop in i don't know why i went to this screen All right, reward should be out by now, and well, we should barely be outside top 3k. Yep, it's what we already knew going into it, and uh, unless people hyper sniped me in arena, we should be staying. But gotta, we're gonna be changing up our layout. It's gonna make our defense technically worse, probably, but we're gonna run divine tier thing on Selif and. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get Nils to have more HP than Selif, I think. Because I have a, a plus HP Nils, so I'm pretty sure I can do that. So I can put Ignis on 2 cooldown to be funny. So if he initiates into someone that doesn't have like guard or whatnot, he can proc Ignis. If someone attacks into him, say with like a unit that doubles or whatever, counter with Ignis, you kind of get the idea. But of course that's why people, some people running like dual win run guard, so that stuff can't happen. And I think I'm gonna run, uh, I don't I don't know who I'm going to run as my option or open slot, probably legendary Julia again, because why the heck not. But uh, let me, let me actually check to see if I actually have a where the plus HP Nils is. I haven't even trained him. <laughs> okay, should probably uh, get to that pretty quick. Uh, I got Dragon Valor, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, I'll be doing that off camera. And there's Interval 20, good chunk of feathers. And uh, let's see, did we stay? It'd be a meme if we didn't, but yeah, we Stayed in by a sliver, but it was expected. And arena assaults. 447, top 500. Good enough. We're just going for top 1Ks nowadays. And I didn't forget this time. Allegiance battles. Top 1K again. And we have exactly 1800 orbs now. Nice. Nice round number. 
Speaking of orbs, uh, as a heads up, on Christmas Day, I'm going to be most likely summoning on... I should say that again. <laughs> most likely, I'm going to be summoning on the legendary upcoming Legendary Heroes banner on Christmas Day. So in the random chance you don't have anything to do on Christmas, uh, there, there'll be that. I'll be uploading the VODs like usual afterwards for the people that want to watch it later. But uh, yeah, it'll be something. The main objective is getting peonies and dumas. We'll see what the heck's on the banner though because we don't really know that much. Which is uh, kind of strange given what we know about banners past December, but uh, that's going to be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. As always, this is Ether Dragon, and hope to see you all next time. Bye!